Today, we're going to eliminate the problem of buzzing, hissing, popping, snapping. The uh, question as to whether a ballast is good, a fluorescent tube is good, um, whether either one of them or both are bad. We're going to replace fluorescent lights uh, fixtures uh, today with LED bulbs. This is toggled. They come in a tube, in a pack, everything that you need to, to transform your standard fluorescent lights into long-lasting LED lights is included in this package. It allows you to bypass the ballast, remove the fluorescent tube so you don't ever have to buy fluorescent tubes again. You don't have to worry about ballasts again. Uh, and these particular tubes are guaranteed for life for residential use and up to six years for commercial use. So you know that you're not going to have to buy tubes for at least six years and maybe for the rest of your life, um, which certainly beats buying fluorescent tubes that may or may not be bad uh, every, every few years. That's what we're going to do today. Fairly simple. You can save yourself some money by doing it yourself. You can hire somebody to do it, whatever the case may be. The important thing is to get it done. Here's what comes in the package. Two non-shunted tombstones, two wire nuts, a label that you put on your uh, fixture stating that this has been switched from standard fluorescent tube to LED tube and this goes on the end where the LED tubes get the electricity supplied to them. A paper showing that it has a limited lifetime residential warranty. A set of installation instructions. Notice that there's also a QR code that you can scan with your phone and show you a video of installation instructions. And the LED light bulb. And notice that the LED light bulb has little protectors on each end for the electrical comp components that you have to pull off before you install them. And on one end of the bulb, the end that receives the electricity has all this writing on it. So that's pretty important. If you put it in backwards, it won't work. It doesn't have that on the other end. Okay, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you turn off power to the fixture you're working on. Of course, you'll have to access your fixture. Okay. Carefully remove your existing fluorescent fixtures, fluorescent bulbs. With this particular kit, it doesn't matter whether your current tombstones are shunted or unshunted. If you don't know what that means, go out and look it up on an internet search. For fluorescent tubes, it's important, but since this particular kit comes with unshunted tombstones on its own, you don't have to worry about that. So if you go to buy these, don't worry about whether your current fluorescent lights have shunted or unshunted tombstones in them. It's not important. Hopefully your ballast cover will be easy to remove. I just simply had to squeeze this one to get it off of these tabs. And you will expose your ballasts. You also notice you got all these wires up in here. And we're going to get rid of most of these. We're going to disconnect the ballasts from everything. I'm cutting the wires close to the, well, fairly close to the ballast, but not so close that they can't be rewired and used again if somebody happens to want to use them. No sense to throw away good ballast if somebody really needs them. So you leave a little, I don't know, three or four inches on there that they can they can use. Want going to cut the power wires that go to the ballast so we don't have those. And we're going to put these right here. And that disconnects the ballasts from all the electricity. If you want to, you can remove your ballast to have additional room in here. You're not going to need them anymore. Maybe somebody you know will. My lovely wife Shirley's helping me. So once you remove the ballast, you got plenty of room to work up in here. 
what I do is I remove these ends that contain the tombstones. So I can work on them on a desktop somewhere. We're going to be doing that in a moment. That's what you pull out. It's got the tombstones on it, and that's how they're wired up. We're going to be discarding those tombstones. Okay, so here we have one of the ends containing four tombstones. See how they're wired up in the back. All that wiring in this particular instance is irrelevant because we're just simply going to pop these tombstones out. They slide right out. And we can toss those. This will require four sets of lights, which we have. You just simply take the tombstones that are there press them into place. And what you have is this. When wiring the tombstones you have a couple of choices. You'll notice that there's four holes here. Each one of those can contain a wire. One way to wire these is to put a blue wire on one side and a white wire on the other and run them all out to the center and connect them to power. That would have you with eight wires coming out of the center to connect to power. The other way to do it is you can take, hand me another one. You can take your wiring and you can run a blue wire from here to here and from here to the third one and from there to the fourth one and have them wired in, in uh, kind of like series except that if one goes out it'll still power the other because you put one wire in one side the incoming wire goes in you have one wire coming out on the other side and you do the same thing with white wires or whatever color you pick but I'm using blue and white same thing with white wires on the other side white wire in white wire out white and uh, white wire in white wire out and then on your last tombstone you'd have a blue and a white wire coming out to the center, so you only have two wires coming out to be connected to power. Okay, I've got all four of these wired up. Blue on one side, white on the other, it doesn't matter what color you use. Uh, I'm using 14 gauge solid wire, stripped back to about a half inch to plug into these little tombstones that have a little push receptacle in them for pushing the wire in. We're going to go here in a moment and wire them up and see how it works. Now you might be asking yourself about now, but Lynn and Shirley, what about the other tombstone bar? Well, I'm getting ready to show you. As you can see, we've already removed a couple. Actually, it just simply fell out as we were walking along. But you take those out of there. Now your each light came with two tombstones. So you put the other tombstones in place of the ones you just removed or that fell out while you were walking. That's how that bar looks, just like that. You might be saying to yourself now, but Lynn and Shirley, what about the power that you're going to have to hook up to it? With LEDs, it only requires power on one end, so these this bar is done. It's ready to go back into the fitting, uh, into the uh, into the fixture, and the only purpose that it has is to hold up the other end of the light bulb. All the power is supplied at one end only. Nifty, huh? Okay, so now we have our non-powered end tombstone holder. So we're going to put it in place. Hope I'm not blocking your shot, but if I am, too bad. Okay, so we now have our non-powered tombstone holder up in place, and remember, the only purpose of this one is to hold this end of the bulb in place so they don't fall out of your fixture. Alright, so now we're getting ready to put our wired 
bar end. Again, remember that this has no power to it, this side. The only reason this is here is to hold up the other end of the tubes. All the power for those tubes come from this side. Um, you want to separate out your white and blue wire as best you can and install this, making sure that none of your wires are caught up in the in between the bodies of your devices here, your um, tombstone holder. Because you don't want the wires pinched against the, um, the housing. That could set up a very bad, very bad situation. Install it back in. That's installed up there for the tubes. Now we separate out our white wires and our blue wires. Cut them off to be even length, so all the same length, and I match it, of course, to the shortest wire. I started out with wires about 32 inches long, but that changes as you weave them into the to the housing. Strip off some some end. And I'm using blue and white wires, as I've said before, so um, I just put the, the blue with the black on the power supply and the white with the white on the power supply. Put them together. Doesn't hurt to use a little electrician tape. Keep everything from vibrating loose. It's not a good idea to tear electrician's tape. You really want to cut it. I know a lot of people tear it. I used to tear it myself. It just doesn't do it any good. Stretches the vinyl in and all that kind of stuff. So. Same thing here. Trim all the wires back to the shortest wire. Strip them. You won't get any power to one of them. That wouldn't be good. Electrician's tape for this too. Just kind of hold everything in place, make sure it doesn't vibrate loose, whatever. If you're worried about the end of your tape, you can put a little tab on there and fold it under so you can get your end of your tape whenever you're ready. Okay, now we'll try to put the cover back on.
have no ballast to worry about. It's pretty easy. Okay, so we're going to put in the bulbs. Um, again, the power, the end that receives power has got this writing on it. The other end does not. The end without the writing goes in the unpowered end. This is only here to hold this bulb up. This has no power to it. Put it in. And you remove those little tips off there that protect it. Oh, by the way, these bulbs are flexible. Okay, something you don't get in a in a normal fluorescent tube. They're also, it would take a lot to break them, so you don't have to worry about broken glass. They're plastic. They're, they're made out of plastic housing, and they're uh, they've got LEDs in them. The little triangular part points down. The side with the writing goes up against the, the top. So then we find out whether it works or not. Ta-da! So now we put the rest of them on, in. We also have a little sticker. I told you about earlier. This little sticker goes on the powered end of your cover. Why? Because it says, this luminaire has been modified to operate direct wire LED lamps. Do not attempt to install or operate fluorescent lamps in this luminaire. Replace only using toggled LED lamps. Why? Because if you put them in there, it's not going to work. This is no longer set up forever to have fluorescent light. So you put that on the powered end. That way you know if you ever have to replace them, take advantage of their warranty and replace the light, you will know that this is the powered end because that's where the sticker is. Powered end, non-powered end. Don't flip them around or they won't work. Ta-da! What? I have it. Huh. I have one not working. I'll have to take it apart and see what the problem is. Well, what's the first thing we check? Yep, got the powered end in there. Yep, could have had a problem with the wiring inside. Maybe a wire flipped out. But I'm going to fix that later. Uh, for now, you see that these work. It really is a pretty simple way of doing it. The wiring is pretty simple. You save yourself a whole lot of a whole lot of problem in the future, not having to worry about whether it's a fluorescent light bulb that's bad, a ballast that's bad, a ballast and a bulb, bulb that's bad, this bulb and that bulb bad. You don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Um, the LEDs take care of all that. Lifetime warranty for a residential purpose. Flexible, non-breakable kind of thing. Well, I'm sure they break under extreme pressure, but they're not going to shatter like other bulbs. And you don't have to replace them nearly as often. Oh, the energy savings too. Uh, about a dollar thirty a year, I think it says on the box. What's it say on the box? I think a dollar thirty, dollar ninety three. It tells you on the box, dollar ninety three a year using these per light uh, if you use them three and a half hours a day or something like that. Anyway, really good energy savings. So, thanks for watching. I think I found the problem with that third bulb. The white wire had slipped out of the powered end. Of the powered uh, tombstone, it had slipped out. I hadn't pushed it in far enough to lock it in place. My bad. It slipped out while I was putting this up. So as you can see, now all four work. Ta-da! So... Go and turn it back on. We have beautiful, even light. No buzzing, no hissing, no popping, no cracking. And it's going to last a while. Uh, thanks again for watching. Turn them where the angle is down, and there you go, and then we see if it works. <laughs> we need to make sure that we have, we need to make sure that all our tombstones are on. So I got two kind of going to the right, two kind of going to the left. Well, four, I guess, if you count them that way, but... 
you want to make sure they do that so they don't get pinched in the pinched in the uh, housing. If man had four hands, we'd find a way to mess it up. 